Yeehaw! I am about to review my second most anticipated vehicle of this year. You want to know something? The first one was from the same automaker. Whatever. It's the Ford F-150 Raptor. Okay, I'll shut up now. Micah mentioned in his first look video that KBB's top two most viewed videos were Raptor videos. So today we are going to try and make the third most viewed video also of this guy. Right, Danger? <laughs> that means a lot of stupid stuff's about to happen. We are no doubt going to go into greater detail on its good looks and impressive interior, but today we have exactly one goal. Today we're driving. So as you can tell by the cool headgear that I'm wearing, that something uh, kind of serious is about to go down. So let's start by talking about the suspension on the new Raptor. Ford has really plussed this out to 11. There's an all new five link rear suspension with coils. Chipping in to make this the most capable Raptor ever, yes, I said it, are the Fox live valve internal bypass shocks Ford stuffed under this thing. They're electronically controlled and they adjust the damping rates up to 500 times a second. Now that is twice the damping rates from the previous generation. The 3.1 inch diameter shock bodies should be able to manage heat more efficiently so you're not overwhelming them when hauling all the A. Also a panhard bar that keeps the live rear axle laterally located to the frame helps with stability and traction. Because of the new rear end, the front end had to get some changes too. That means new control arms and every single joint is new. And now it's able to stay lockstep with the rear. My favorite kind of off-roading is Baja style off-roading. I love just bombing down a dirt road. So now in the Raptor, you're gonna get 15 inches of travel in the rear. You're getting 14 inches of travel up front. So on things like whoops and washboard, this thing is so much more improved over the last generation Raptor. If you get the Raptor with those 37 inch tires, then you are going to lose a little bit of that travel, but you also gain a little bit of ground clearance, 13.1 inches total. So maybe worth the swap. Getting those bigger tires will also add beefier dampers to handle the extra weight. So no, you don't need to diet. Underneath the hood, there's a 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. Power numbers are still solid in the latest version of this truck. So for anybody who is really bummed because there's no V8, then just wait for the Raptor R, which will have a V8, but not until later in 2022. But you know what? For those who are doing a lot of fun stuff, you know, this V6, this V6 is pretty decent. You can help attribute that to Ford's 10-speed auto with a two-speed transfer case. It's a solid transmission for the application here, and you can always mess around with it manually if you're wanting to do stuff that it doesn't see coming. Baja mode holds gears longer and actually really nicely. So when you are trying to keep up your speed, it's not gonna slow you down too much. It does have a little bit of a tough time selecting gears when you're on sand. So you may wanna do that yourself. And uh, Danger loves that in sport mode, the Raptor actually rev matches. So yeah, sporty truck. If you're tackling technical terrain, say that five times fast, you get a standard electronic locking rear diff and an optional Torsen limited slip up front. With those employed, there really isn't a whole lot the Raptor can't handle, as long as the F-150's wheelbase and breakover angle doesn't get in your way. So according to Ford, a lot of their customers were looking for a little bit more rambunctious sounding Raptor. So what they did is they put an X pipe right in front of the muffler just to mix that sound nice and perfectly and they put in three inch tubing they've got a sound adjustable sound valve on there now so you can really adjust the sound of your exhaust and uh, it definitely sounds a lot more mean and growly 
Underneath all of that is a new F-150 platform that only comes in super crew body form. But it's even more reinforced and should be tough enough to handle as much insanity as drivers can throw at it. I sure tried some stuff. <laughs> that was there, dude! <laughs> If we look at the interior super fast, you'll see a 12 inch digital gauge cluster and 12 inch infotainment screen. You can also get 360 degree cameras to help spot you if your friends are busy laughing super hard. The terrain management system on Ford off-road vehicles is wickedly effective. You can genuinely feel the dynamics of the damping, transmission and steering change underneath you. For those of you customers who are buying this and landing maybe in the safety third category, uh, Ford's got your back because the whole Copilot 360 suite of safety features comes standard. Gas mileage, yeah, you do not buy this for the gas mileage. It does tow up to 8,200 pounds now and those numbers do go down. We'll go into more trims when we do a full review, but you can dude up your Raptor with carbon fiber trim and Recaro seats if you want to. Hey, subscribe to the KBB YouTube channel and check it out when we do that. So one system that I actually really like is trail one pedal drive. Now you usually use that for rock crawling. We did not do any rock crawling on this trip, but it's the same system that's in the Bronco and it is a smooth operator. If you don't want to use your left foot to do braking, then it's really a great system to be able to just focus on the trail and on your steering. There's also trail control, Ford's off-road cruise control, and it's great to employ if you wanna just focus on the road. Regular adaptive cruise control for the road comes standard. Speaking of the road, yes, I suppose I should do some driving here too. The on-road manners of the Raptor are surprisingly good, and I was driving with those 37 inch tires. There wasn't an overabundance of noise. I will partially give credit to the BFG Goodrich KO2 tires that are my favorite to wheel on. From the comfort, thanks to the new suspension, how the steering firms up at speed, the excellent adaptive safety features that aren't intrusive, driving the Raptor on the road feels like you're driving a much smaller truck. That is super powerful, at least until you try and park it. The third gen F-150 has a starting price of about $64,200, but you start loading this sucker up and you're getting closer to about 80 grand. And that does not include an almost $1,700 destination charge. I'm very impressed with the improvements Ford made on the Raptor. Or am I? Hmm, I think I'm gonna have to drive it a bunch more to make sure. Kidding. This is quite an upgrade over last gen. Nice job, Ford. I am so surprised that Micah didn't chop her out here all by himself to do this, but man, I'm glad he didn't. There's gonna be a lot more to dig into with the Raptor, but for now, it's time for me to go do more stupid stuff.